Hi guys, this is Dr. Bailey from Trayminder. I'm a practicing orthodontist as well as the co-founder of Trayminder, a clear aligner app for clear aligner patients. Uh, today I'm going to go over with you how and why teeth move. The reason why I want to go over that is because once you understand the mechanism in which teeth move, hopefully you'll be more motivated to wear your aligners and your rubber bands 22 hours a day. So before we get started, it's important to know about the different parts of the teeth. So your tooth has a crown, which is the part that you can see, right? So that's this part right here. And then you've got the part, it's called the root that is below the gum surface that's covered by bone and gum tissue. So I'm going to use a little um, analogy like this. So if this is the crown, this is the part of the tooth you can see. This is the root surface that's embedded in the bone itself. And of course, covering the bone is your gum tissue. All right. So now your root surface actually isn't fused to the bone. It actually, there's actually a space called the periodontal ligament. The periodontal ligament is a little space that surrounds the root of the tooth. And so that it acts like a shock absorber. There are, there are fibers, periodontal fibers that attach from the, the cementum, which is the root surface, to the bone, the lamina dura. The reason why you want to have a periodontal ligament is so that when you bite into something hard, it's not going to hurt as much. There's a little bit of a give, all right? So how teeth move is that when you put pressure on a tooth, much like a liner pushing on your, on your tooth, it's going to basically push the root of the tooth a little bit closer to this side. Let's say you want the tooth to move this way. It's going to push the tooth a little bit closer. And if you hold that force for four hours, then the cellular mechanism of bone remodeling will begin. What does that mean? It just means that the, the bone, the lamina dura, it has osteoclast cells, which are bone breaking cells. These are cells that break down bone so that uh, the tooth can actually have a space to move into. So after four hours of continuous force, the lamina dura, the cells, the osteoclast cells in the lamina dura will start to eat away, resorb the bone on this side, okay? And after about two to three, four days, that the bones, the bone material on this surface will be resorbed away and the tooth can actually move into that space, all right? Now, because the tooth has moved over to this side, the surface area, the distance between the back side is now increased, right? So that's when you have to backfill. So then the bone cells in the lamina dura called the osteoblasts, the building cells, will begin to deposit bone material on the back side, so it's back filling, so that this area will be filled with bone. So that's that's the reason why a lot of you will feel that your trays, your aligners will feel tight for the first two to three days, and then after that, you don't feel any more pressure. And that's because once the tooth has moved, the tray is no longer putting any pressure on your teeth and so you're not going to be feeling feeling any pressure or pain um so then my patients will say well dr bailey can't i just switch to the next set of aligners since i'm not feeling anything anymore well no because now you know that the next few days you know the next four to ten days that is time needed for the back filling it's time needing for the osteoblast to deposit bone material in the in the back side so that it will be filled with bone otherwise your teeth will be very mobile and i've seen that happen to patients who move their trays too quickly their teeth are moved too quickly and that leads to a lot of mobility 
okay? And I also want to point out that adult patients tend to have more mobility than my adolescent and younger patients. And the reason is because when you're younger, your bone cells are more uh, active, they they your teeth move faster and with less discomfort that has been proven um, and also in older as we get older and wiser sometimes the bone okay is is uh, a little bit decreased so for people with periodontal disease or people with decreased periodontium which basically means that the bone level has receded has gone down there's more of the crown uh, showing and less of the root surface embedded in the bone. And so when you move teeth, you're going to see more mobility. Some mobility in orthodontic movement is of course normal because there's no way to not have any mobility as you're moving teeth. But severe mobility is something of concern. So that's why it's important to be supervised with an orthodontist or dentist so that they can keep track of your, pros your progress. All right, so that's how your teeth actually move. When you move your teeth uh, with light continuous forces, then the tooth will move very well. It's, you know, after two to three days, the tooth will move. You'll have that back filling and you put more pressure on it and it'll keep moving into that desired area. Now, why is it important that you're wearing your aligners and rubber bands consistently? Well, it's because your bone cells will only go through the process of bone remodeling if it gets a signal from, from you. So that signal is your aligners or your braces putting pressure on a tooth. So I will give you an analogy. It is like if you are cooking a, a turkey for Thanksgiving. You can't just pop in your turkey into a cold oven. You actually have to turn the knob on your oven and preheat the oven. Once it gets to the desired temperature, then your, your turkey will start cooking, right? So every time you take off your aligner or you take off your rubber bands, that's akin to turning the knob off and turning the oven off. And if you leave it off for long enough, the oven goes back to cold and you've got to restart that process all over again. So while your turkey can get cooked, it's going to take a lot longer to get your turkey ready. Does that make sense? So that's why it's important to try to maximize the amount of time that you're wearing your aligner so that your oven is never cool to the to the point of being completely cold. So remember that in order for your teeth to start moving and for the bone cells to start their their process, it takes about four hours. So if you wear your aligners for six hours, the first four hours, your teeth aren't actually moving. It's time needed to get all the cellular components together to start the osteoclast osteoblast activity. That process I just described is called frontal resorption, and that has been shown to be the most effective way to move your teeth with gentle, continuous forces. Now, what happens if you move a tooth too aggressively and you use higher forces? Well, that sort of tooth movement is called undermining resorption. And undermining resorption does move teeth, but it does take a lot longer, about seven to 10 days for your teeth to actually move. Let me describe to you what that entails. So your tooth is sitting within the bone and you put a very heavy force, okay, against the bone. What happens, remember, is that that periodontal ligament space, it's squeezed too tightly. And within the periodontal ligament space, there are blood vessels. And when the blood vessels get occluded, meaning that they get pressed and closed off, necrosis happens. Necrosis is a cellular death, basically. So now the, the osteoclast cells on the lamina dura of the bone 
is doesn't have the necessary osteoclast to break down that wall of bone for the tooth for the tooth to move into so after a few days the adjacent osteoclast cells in the marrow space of your bone they will start to break down the bone from the other end you can't break bone from from the inside out because the cells are no longer there and uh, they've died. So now the adjacent osteoclast cells will have to break down the bone from the other side. And so they're coming in, they're eating away the bone and it takes a lot longer because there's a lot more bone to go through. And that's why the actual process of tooth movement and undermining resorption takes so much longer. So once the osteoclast cells break down the bone uh, from the other end and it break down the lamina dura, then the tooth will finally have the room to move into that space. So once you understand the differences between frontal resorption, like continuous forces, and undermining resorption, heavy intermittent forces leading to necrosis, you'll appreciate why it's so much better to use lighter forces, but do it in a continuous manner. So I hope that this video has been helpful for you in understanding why your orthodontist may tell you to wear your aligners for 22 hours a day. I'm one of those people that like to know why something happens or why, what's, the, what's the rationale for a set of directions and that helps to motivate me to do what I'm told to do. And so by understanding the biology of tooth movement and the processes involved, that helps me to make better decisions and it helps me to hold myself accountable so that I can get better results. Now, one final uh, question I get a lot from patients is, well, you know, my cousin, my friend says that they are only wearing their aligners or rubber bands at night and they're doing fine. And yes, that's your teeth can move with intermittent uh, forces, just like people who ha are thumb suckers or finger suckers or tongue thrusters. We have all seen the effects of that, you know, flaring of the front teeth, spaces forming, reverse smile line. Those are all adverse effects of, of habits that we've seen. And so yes, indeed, any sort of force will move your teeth, right? Just like if I were to turn on the oven and turn it off, turn it on. If I do that, uh, you know, for an X number of days long enough, yeah, my turkey will eventually get cooked. It's just the efficiency is not there, right? You're not, um, you're not going to get to your desired uh, effect or your desired result as quickly as possible. And I, you know, for most people, they want to be done with their smile correction as quickly as possible. And uh, so that's, that's the reason why you want to be as consistent as possible. If you're increasing, if you're doing too much at once, you know, that's akin to turning on your oven much higher of a temperature than what is recommended. You burn the outside and the inside of the turkey is still uncooked. And so you, that leads to an undesirable effect, right? So I hope that you have found this video to be helpful. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the Treminder video on YouTube, and I'll see you next time. Bye.